Hey, what's up? MacBook here. Today I'm going to make a review on the application called Mac Keeper, which is an all-in-one system maintenance tool for your Mac. So let's get right into it. So the first thing you see when you launch up Mac Keeper is the status window. Here you can see the status of your online ser services such as Geek on Demand and anti theft as well as your cleaners, how much you've cleaned from your hard drive and how much this saved you. Here you can also log in into your account which should automatically log in for you, you don't need to do that every time. Uh, at the right of the window you have 24-7 customer support which is a great feature obviously you can have a live chat, send them an email or even call them on the phone if you have any problems with Mac Keeper or your Mac. Um, then at the left you have all your cleaners and your tools uh, that are included in Mac Keeper. So the first one is one click scan. So one click scan automatically activates all the cleaners which includes cache and logs cleaner, binary cutter, duplicates finder, language cutter and old files finder. So the binary cutter will automatically find all the applications you have in your applications folder and will mark the unnecessary size here. So how this works is that um, when you download an application you download a universal binary which you mount on your computer and then you have there are two versions of this uh, there's a PowerPC version and as well an Intel based version so um, the PowerPC versions you probably don't need them anymore since you're probably on an Intel based Mac and it removes the PowerPC parts because that is just using unnecessary space so that's how that is how this works you can compare this a bit to uh, X slimmer which is also an application which does something very similar so for the preferences on this cleaner you can choose on which folders he has to scan for applications so right now I just have my applications folder but if you have other applications on different locations you might wanna include those in the list so then you have a few advanced options as well So the cache cleaner just removes old caches you have on your computer and that just takes space on your hard drive. So it shows up all the system caches first and then the user's caches last and you have the size of each cache here. You also have a filter option. This is also included in all the other cleaners if you're wondering. Um, you have the size at this uh, side and you can just remove this will ask you for your password and then it will remove all the caches. So this of course improves the speed of your Mac, although caches are sometimes a bit important. Um, caches help, for example, web pages to load faster since they already have a certain amount of data of that website on your computer. So you might not want to delete all of them, but I recommend de deleting the ones you don't really need. Then we have the duplicates finder. So this is really simple. It finds all the duplicate files you have on your hard drive, which are most of the time just simple uh, caches or things you don't really know about, but they're uh, duplicates, so you can't remove them. Although uh, you'll notice that by default they are not checked um, right here. So this is just for security purposes. So um, uh, you can choose which one you want to remove and which one you don't want to remove because it can be dangerous to remove all of them without even knowing what you're removing. Uh, you may need them, maybe you duplicated them on purpose, uh, so you don't really know. For each file, you can right-click it and then reveal it in Finder, which will automatically show it up here in the Finder. So here it's a picture, apparently. Um, so you can see as well uh, the size at the right side, as usual, as well as the filter um, option so then you can rescan and remove the ones you don't want here so it will again ask you for your password so that's it for the delegates finder uh, for the preferences on this um, cleaner you, there's only one preferences um, it's just uh, for which files you want to search so always higher than and then for kilobytes megabyte whatever uh, so you can change this obviously so uh, it's better not to have it too low, I would recommend at least like 500 kilobytes so that it doesn't find all those really really small files uh, that you doesn't matter if you remove them anyway. So yep, that's the only preference for this cleaner.
So then for the languages cutter. So the languages cutter just removes all the languages pack that you no need. So how does this work? When you download an application, you have this application offers often uh, multiple languages and a lot of those languages you don't even need because or you don't talk them or whatever. But I mean, you will not need them um, anyway in the future. So here you can remove all those languages. You can also uh, select which languages you still want to keep. You can group for each language which will automatically scan for all your applications as well as you can group for each individual application so for example I want to go to uh, this application uh, better zip it will automatically show me that it has German, Spanish, Italian, Japanese, Russian and Chinese so it will just show me all the languages that it offers and all those I do not need so I can just simply remove them so obviously you see the application here you can select them uh, as I said or by application or by language you can see the size at the right side um, and in the preferences you can select um, the language you want to retain by default so um, it will by default it would have selected English because you're probably currently using it uh, it will select the one you're currently using since you cannot remove that one uh, you can choose the folders uh, which you want to scan it's the same for the binaries um, so I've got my languages to retain just the, the standard languages I'm talking um, and all the rest I can just simply remove because I won't need them so that's basically how language cutters work um, so it's a really simple and yet great feature to remove unnecessary space because as you see this takes me 1.4 gigs of unnecessary space which I will not need so then we have the logs cleaner which automatically finds all the log on your hard drive uh, you have the system logs and the user logs those logs are often created by your operating system or by your application you download it um, log files just store data about the application or your operating system such as device changes, uh, drivers, um, system changes, stuff like that. So here, uh, logs most of the time do not take up a lot of space, so it doesn't really matter that much if you remove them or not, but it's always great to have the possibility to remove them if you would like to. So again, the standard interface here, you have the title, the size, uh, you can select each individual log and remove it, um, the same buttons here, rescan, remove, you have the filter option. So then there is old files finder. So old files finder just finds all the files that are quite old on your hard drive so you can set how old they have to be before it indicates it. But you can use this in two ways. Uh, first off you can just delete the files that are old because you don't need them and they just take up space or you're just trying to find a file and you know you haven't used it in a while so you can just search it up like that so it's quite simple, it just finds all the um, old files and you can select them, delete them or right click them, review and finder uh, it says last opened and then the size it says exactly where they're located, stuff like that um, so you can for example choose uh, one of them and say not old so it removes them from the old list uh, I have to check it though. There you go, so it removes it from the old list. Um, so there are a few options like this. Uh, in the preferences of this, you can choose how old the file must be before it shows it up. So I've got it in one year, so each file that is older than one year shows up here. So if you, if you change this, for example, to months and then uh, three months, for example, it's going to find all the files which are three months. So you can also set up how big they have to be before they show up. So that's kind of it for the old files finder. Uh, really simple but really nice to have if you wanted to find old files on your hard drive. So next to the cleaners, MacKeeper also has a ton of different tools. So I'm just going to go th over them quickly here. So we have first off the backup which is obviously to back up data of your hard drive. So you just click on add to add the location you want to back up. So for example, you want to back up your whole hard drive. So I'm just going to select Macdash HD. Then you name it. So you're going to say, for example, fill backup. 
you add that. So here, if you press on the little triangle, it will say exactly which path it's going to back up. So for here, the whole Macintosh HD, so the, just a slash. But otherwise, it just shows the whole path. Um, then you have to select the amount of copies you want to have of it. So you can have up to 100 copies. So we're just going to keep it at 2, for example, or whatever. That doesn't really matter. That's up to you. So then you want to have when you want to do the backup. So you can or, or do it manually. So basically backup only when you want to. Or you can set it up for hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly. So for example, monthly, and you want to do it on the 15th of the month. So you change this to 15th, and then you want to change the time. You can also set that up really precisely. So then you can select the destination. So you got to go to manage destinations. Um, so to add a destination, just click on the plus. Here you have a few different options. You can add destination GeoDisk, which is my Mac, FTP, SFTP, or WebDev. So FTP, uh, if you have a server, a uh, remote server, for example, you can back it up on there. But I'm just going to select my Mac, since that's probably the most known um, you're going to back it up on. So you're going to back up your hard drive on my Mac, but this also includes external hard drive as well as USB flash drives. Um, if you want to. So you select that, you can name it so main hard drive for example and then you select where you want to back it up so for example you have a external hard drive while well, you select that one if you have a USB flash drive you can select that as well so right here it goes on my backup hard drive so then if I close this up I can select here main HD and it will automatically get to my backup hard drive then you just click on backup now it's going to ask you for a password it's going to take a while and you'll have it backed up so that's it for the backup so then we have data encryptor so the first time you select data encryptor it will ask you for a password so you can go ahead and set that up once you're on the data encryptor window you can go ahead and click on the add button and select the file you would like to encrypt so I'm just going to select the picture. So once the file is finished encrypting here, uh, by default it will be unhidden. But if you have it on your hard drive here, I've got it right here, and you select the file, you click on hide, it will automatically hide the file so you won't be able to see it anymore on your hard drive. So that's how Data Encryptor works. So then we have default apps. So what default apps allows you to do is that for each file extension, it allows you to choose with what application is going to open it. So, for example, we have a .config file. It's automatically going to set up, uh, open that up with TextMate. But, for example, if you don't want that, you want to change that, you can just select other, stuff like that. So, here you have the filter option, which comes out really handy. For example, you have the text extension. So, for all the text files... Here, I just put the text in the filter. It's going to automatically show me the text extension. And it opens up with TextMate. So for example, you want to change that. You just click on here. And you choose what you want to open it with. For example, Word. So that's it for a uh, default app. So it's really simple, but still really handy uh, if you want to change the default uh, application so it automatically opens with your favorite application. Disk usage. So disk usage is really simple. You can compare it uh, a bit to Grand Perspective or Daisy's Disk. What it basically does is you choose a folder and it will automatically show you all the files inside it and the size of it. So you can select put the highest size up first and then you can just search like this. So it's not a huge feature. It's just to show you what's in your hard drive and what's taking up the most space. So then we have logging items, so that's a great little app uh, feature here. Uh, you can select all the apps that launch up on startup of your Mac or login. So when you log in, it automatically uh, starts up all those applications. You can add applications or remove them. So for example, I have Cinch here, and I don't want it to start up as uh, when I log in. I just click on the minus, and it removes it. So it's really simple. If you want to add it again, just click on the plus. It will automatically open up your applications folder go to your application so in this case it was cinch so you select cinch and you just click open
and then it will automatically launch it up next time you log in so really simple again but can always come out handy so then we have the shredder so what the shredder does is uh, it deletes app files or documents right away from your hard drive without leaving any traces um, if you trash your files and then just empty the trash with the normal trash you should have um, it always leaves some traces and you get about 60% of the space back so for example if you have a 10 gig file if you shred it you'll have 10 gig right away whether then if you trash it you have to wait before you get the 10 gigs so for example I've got a file here I drag it to the shredder it will automatically add it to the list and then all I need to do is click on shred it will ask you for your password enter your password and then it's gonna shred the file so there you go my file disappeared so that's it for shredder just an other alternative to the trash except it doesn't leave any traces so then we have the undelete feature which allows you to recover files you have deleted through the trash so um, note that if you delete a file through the shredder it will, this will not be possible obviously so if you just select on undelete it will uh, ask you on which hard drive you deleted the file so for example on your Macintosh hard drive so it's gonna start a scan so then you can filter it by all images documents music sound videos and archives so let it, let it scan and you'll have the status under the window right here so it's scanning and it's telling you to wait so just wait for that so once it has finished scanning um, you'll note that all the files you have deleted does not uh, keep the name you had so they all have numbers now so you kind of have to scroll through them so you can use the quick look support so just pressing selecting the file and pressing on space so it will automatically show up in quick look so all those little uh, um, pictures here so I've uh, filtered them by pictures or you can take the biggest one on top and check out what that is uh, and stuff like that so that's how you use undelete once you have found the picture or the document you want to recover just select it and click on recover so just click on recover I think it will ask you for a password and then you'll have it recovered so that's how undelete works uh, really really useful uh, can be really really useful when you delete something you still need we have wise uninstaller what you can compare it to app delete app Cleanio, or app zapper uh, basically to uninstall your apps as you know may already know uh, the apps if you just drag them to your trash they do not totally delete uh, because there are a lot of different files related to the application so what this allows you to do, it allows you to uh, uninstall application widgets, preference panels, or plugins. So I'm just going to go through the application. You select the application you want to, to remove, and you can see all the related files to it. So there will probably be the, the application, and then the list, and then sometimes other files. You just select it, and you click on remove. It's going to ask you for a password, and your application will be removed. So really simple but that's how you should uninstall applications from your Mac after the tools Mac Keepers also offers three main online services so they have anti-theft geek on demand and Zeodisk so I'm gonna go over anti-theft right now so anti-theft allows you to locate your Mac through internet connection so whatever other computer you're using you can go on the Mac Keepers website log in into your account and it will automatically show the last location it was on uh, where it had an internet connection the second service is Geek On Demand what Geek On Demand offers is basically um, you send Mac Keeper uh, the company you send them a message with a problem you have with your Mac and then you can arrange a phone call with a Mac expert and they'll call you back you can talk about the problem and fix the problem which you have on your Mac so it's basically in help desk uh, you can compare it to a help desk but then for your Mac Zeodisk so this is a service that is still in development um, what Zeodisk is going to offer is uh, online storage 
So basically service in a few locations in the world and you're going to be able to backup data on there so directly from MacKeeper if you're using the backup tool uh, or just store whatever uh, other files you want, important files you would like to backup. So it's going to offer a high speed transfer uh, as well as a web interface so you can access your files from browsers and as well as file sharing so you probably will be able to share your file, have a link and send it to your friend for example uh, you want to send them pictures or you can just do that with zero disk but this again is a feature that is still in development so it's not totally out yet but it will come relatively soon so here are a few of my pros and cons about this app so the only complaint I had about this app is the data encrypting is uh, a little bit slow by time to time so that is really my only complaint all the rest is really really good um, so for me it's a great all-in-one system maintenance tool for a very very decent price so I highly recommend you go check it out so that was it uh, that's my review on Mac Keeper so thanks for watching I know it was a little long but thanks for watching if you watched all the way through um, so be sure to check them out MacKeeper.zobit.com uh, link will be in the description under this video obviously so you can go ahead and check out their website as well as trying out their software uh, MacKeeper there's a 50 day trial and you can even if you refer 10 people to use MacKeeper you can have your own MacKeeper copy for free so uh, if you make an account um, you have that under the options so again thank you very much for, for watching be sure to rate or like this video um, be sure to comment if you have any questions about this software again and subscribe if you haven't already thanks for watching again peace